Okay, so I definitely heard in the comments that the resolution was a bit of an issue in the past couple of videos, so I wanted to take an opportunity to re-record a couple of these uh, before we get any further within this series. So let's talk about the interface here. You can see mine's gonna be looking quite a bit larger than yours. That's because I've bumped it up a bit. I didn't increase the resolution, but uh, VS Code has a way of coming into view and then you can zoom in and out. So hopefully this is big enough. Hopefully this makes things a little bit easier to see. You'll notice that when I do some actions, everything is just larger overall. So it's not just font size or anything like that. It's the whole the whole thing. So here we have the interface for VS Code. And, and sure enough, I dropped in a project here. Now I loaded this up simply by dropping a folder onto the VS Code icon, but you could also load a project by coming into File, Open, Open Recent, anything like that here. And what we have here is just an actual React Native application. The code here doesn't really matter. We're gonna be mostly talking about sort of the interface and how to get around. Now, VS Code is a little bit different than, uh, let's say, Atom or Sublime Text. And Atom gives you a little bit more sort of like visual fluff, right? The interface is a little bit nicer. You're not editing JSON files constantly for settings and stuff like that. What VS Code gives you is a little bit more feature rich out of the box. And what we can see here instantly is that we have our standard sort of file tree that you're used to seeing in any other text editor. But we also have this column over here on the left. And this is going to include several things such as extensions, which we're going to get over in another video. We have a debug panel, which is really interesting because it sort of borders on IDE territory here. And then we have some Git things where we can actually commit directly from our repository in here. Uh, let me make this bigger overall here. We can change branches. We can do a whole bunch of really incredible good stuff, which we'll be going over. And we have a more dedicated search, find, and replace. Now, let me tell you one thing I love about the search, find, and replace compared to these other two, Adam and Sublime. This thing is super, super fast. Uh, it find over your entire project. It takes no time at all compared to Adam, which, you know, can overload your memory in no time trying to find something in a large project. And lastly, at the very top, we have our files panel, which is already open. Now our files panel by default shows us our open editors for the entire project. From here, we have some icons such as create a new file, create a new folder, wanna refresh in case maybe there are some changes that haven't been seen. I've never used the refresh button, but I can imagine that if you're not noticing a file tree update or something like that, it could be useful. And then we also have just collapse all, which is gonna collapse every single folder. So let's say we dive into all of these folders here and all of a sudden wanna get out, collapse all, gets us out. So this is really nice. It's a nice way to take control over your files. And if we were to open a file like this app.js, you can see it shows up in our open editors where we actually have some icons if we hover over the open editors, such as horizontal editor group layout. Okay, so this is the file panel. Again, we have search, find, and replace. We have our Git, we have our debug tools, and we have our extensions. Now let's check out some of the other stuff we have. I'm gonna zoom this over, or what's really nice here, we can collapse this entirely simply just by clicking this and it's gone. Now, what else do we have here? At the bottom, we have this toolbar, which formerly has never been themable in the past. However, a new version of VS Code just came out and you can actually, if the theme supports it, this doesn't have to be blue finally anymore. But what we're gonna see down here is we're gonna see stuff from our debug console if we're having issues. You're gonna have stuff down here if you're having like ES lint bugs, maybe you're linting your code you have your sort of what line in particular you're on. If you click this, it gives you the option to even just jump to a line. Okay, so this is really more informational. I don't know if I've ever clicked this to change what line I'm on. We also have the ability to change our indentation. Right now I'm using two spaces, but we could use tab spaces, whatever. I am not going to judge you on your tabs or spaces. Uh, that is up to you. Next, we have what sort of type encoding. I've never changed this from UTF-8, but then again, I've never had a reason to. And then we have this LF. 
Now this is the select end of line sequence, which actually uh, the LF stands for line feed or uh, CRLF stands for carriage return. And this has to do with how the application handles line breaks. I'm not one to change this. If you do need to change this, then uh, obviously you would know, but it's not something that most people are gonna go in here and change. And the next we have this JavaScript where it's detecting what language you're using. And obviously we can extend this with various different languages and different extensions. We'll be going over extensions in the next video. And then we have our linting, which is telling us that our output down here, the ESLint server is running, although it is obviously missing a config file. So it's not doing anything for us right now, but what's really nice is this will give us a little bit of output. One of the things I really love about VS Code is just how friendly it is with linting. And, and that's something that Sublime Text has never done really well. Adam got it right. But uh, for some reason, VS Code has been way more reliable all the way around. And lastly, we have the smiley face, which is really just uh, tell us about your feedback. You know, the cool thing about the VS Code is this is a labor of love. So this team really puts a lot of effort into making this thing really well. Um, you're going to have a, a lot of people who have different needs and wants. So it's always nice to give them your experience. Okay, if we close that out, last thing we have in this interface is up top right. Now this was not here when we had a no file open, but now that we have a file open, we can do a couple of things here. For instance, if we want to split the editor, it's going to split this. And notice how it's splitting it vertically or it's cutting it in half vertically. That has to do with up top here where we had this icon, this icon right here that we click now. And you'll notice now when we split a page, it's going to split it vertically or it's gonna split it down the middle. And we have two now vertical panes, okay? Notice how it's the same file. I've never quite understood that exactly. You would think maybe we wanna put a different file in here, but it works. And let's close this. Now one really cool thing is if we were to actually have this project being a Git tracked if we were to click open changes, it would show us our changes. We're gonna talk a little bit more about Git stuff in another video. And then I have these dot, 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 which is just show open editors, it's anything else. And really it's just gonna give us an option to jump between our editors. I don't use this button much. I can't imagine needing it. Now, one of the things I wanted to talk about was getting around files. Now in Sublime Text and Atom, we had things like Command T, and you'll notice if we hit Command T, this is going to allow us to search for symbols. For instance, if we start typing in app, what it's gonna find is the app class inside of app.js. If we click that, it takes us right to the line where it defines app. Now let's do Command T and search for lowercase. And you can see I type in S and it's already found styles which is our styles that were created from the stylesheet.create and it's gonna jump directly to that line. So go to symbol is for finding bits of code. Now what happens if you wanted to jump to a particular file, you can do command P. And now command P allows you to basically go to any file. What's brilliant here is that you have recently opened already here and we have a split window button. So if we wanted to open our app.json in a split panel, we can click this icon right here and it's now opened app.json in a split panel for us. So the two keyboard shortcuts I use the most, command T to find a symbol or command P to start searching for a file. And obviously if you start typing, it's going to find you that file. Okay, so this is how we get around and this is the interface of VS Code. It's quickly become my favorite text editor and I really can't imagine using anything else right now. So check it out in the next video. We're gonna go over how you can extend VS Code with some extensions because really a text editor is only as good as the extension library it has. And VS Code has a great extension library. So fire up the next video and learn a little bit about VS Code extensions. As always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. More free tutorials on the way, as well as more premium series. If you want to subscribe, become a pro member, you can get access to full tutorial series code examples that aren't available on YouTube. Head over to store.leveluptutorials.com and check it out. The latest series is the sketch course where I teach you how to become a sketch master. So check that out, store.leveluptutorials.com. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.